taste for something now that you're a part of? Well, it's super surreal. I remember uh, my first con was actually at no. City Comic Con. <laughs> my favorite artist and artist Allie and you know having signed my poster and stuff so this is like a real nostalgic homecoming for me. That well welcome. Welcome home girl. Yeah. Welcome home. <laughs> Josh and Jeremy, have you guys ever been to Seattle before? Uh, yeah, no, I have been. I was here for PAX a couple okay. years ago. And then I actually did like a play in Issaquah. Oh. And, 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 and so I was like, I lived out here for maybe three months, four months. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've like been it. here once before for Hamilton to Comic Con about three years ago, I think. Okay, okay. Back uh, before, before Ultron started at all, I actually hung out with uh, Chris Summer who plays uh, Hagar on Voltron. Yeah. Uh, I hung out in, uh, in, in the con and stuff, and then, you know, a few, not too long after that, uh, we both got roles on this amazing show, and I'm uh, back out here for Voltron, so... This amazing show, how much did you guys know sort of about the source material before you went in and, and read for the roles? I watched the original growing up, but I was really, really young, so... That one person? Yeah! One <laughs> <laughs> guy. But I was really young, so I didn't really... I mean, I remembered a lot of it, uh -huh. but not, like, the real intricacies. And then, with Shiro, since he's much different from his, uh, his, uh, original Voltron counterpart... Same. Yeah, he's not Sven. <laughs> yeah. um, it was kind of like having a fresh start, so I didn't yeah. really need to have a lot of the, a lot of knowledge. But I did, but I didn't really need it. Right, right. Uh, for me, like I knew what Voltron was because it's you know it's just it was a big show, obviously from the '80s, and so there's you see like the toys and stuff. So like I knew I knew of it, but I never I never watched it myself. It was a little before my time. I'm, I'm on the younger the younger side of the cast. You don't have to rub it in. Yeah. So <laughs> just turned 21. Um, Going in, yeah. and, uh, and when I auditioned, I didn't want to watch uh, any of the original because I didn't want to have like somebody else's take on it. I guess in my head, I just right. wanted to look at the material and then do what felt the most uh, natural. Uh, and so then, after getting the getting the part, and then after going through like, probably the first season or so, then I went back and watched uh, like I think you guys like handpicked episodes of the of the original show, uh, and, it, and it made it that much more interesting and cool to me seeing like how much of our show pays homage to that show and, uh, and just. All the little, there's so many little intricate Easter eggs and things from that show that really uh, just give it its due. So yeah, well, Joaquim and, and Lauren, you guys, when you tackled this project, obviously the source material is really important and pat, and there's a huge passionate fan base for that. And season one, I can't believe it, but had 100% rating approval on Rotten Tomatoes, which is for like you. Oh! Was it to stay true to the origin and also adapt this for the Netflix generation? I mean, I think our sort of baseline was that we were fans of the original. Uh -huh. So we knew sort of from a very guttural place what we wanted to see and what needed to stay and what could go. Um, you know, from a very sort of early, early pitched version, we knew we wanted the show to be colorful. We knew that we wanted it to be campy and fun, but action and, and dramatic at the same time. In a way, uh, it being like a show from so long ago made it a little easier because our memories weren't so great. So we knew that the things that we could remember were the important things, and that was what we kind of looked to keep in the show. And then the things that kind of fell to the background that we couldn't remember were the things that we could kind of play with okay. and, and have our, our wiggle room. And that was kind of a thing that happened that we noticed with fans of the original series. They remembered the big, broad strokes, but the little intricacies were gone, so that was... So it was open palette yeah, totally. for, the, for the nooks of the, yeah. Well, we have a special treat for you guys. I don't know if you know, but we're going to screen the first episode. Of <laughs> you guys are going to see it before literally anybody else. <laughs> Two things about that. One, I want you guys to tee us up where we are leaving off and, and the end of four going into five. But because this is an exclusive for you guys who paid to be here and come to this panel, we want to make sure we do not put any spoilers out on social media. Can you guys promise that? Yeah. I don't think I heard you loud enough. Will you promise not to put spoilers out? Yeah. Okay. All right. At least you. until tomorrow. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Just tomorrow. So like you know, 12 hours or so. Yeah. yeah. That's it. 
Spoil anything with that short of an amount of time, they're kind of a jerk. So. <laughs> and there you have it. So, what, tee us up. Where, where do we leave off in season four? So, the mysterious Lotor has shown up and uh, <laughs> rescued our heroes from uh, assured defeat. Uh, in particular, saving uh, Keith from sacrificing himself. <laughs> um, and the mystery of Lotor sort of lingers about. How does that all shake out with our team? And where does everything land? All right. Let's let's roll the episode. What do you guys think? What is Lotor up to? <laughs> Come on. Uh, he's a very complex alien. Uh, I will say that I believe that Lotor, despite how shady he may act, comes from a very genuine place. So he's a he's a complex guy, and uh, he's got a lot of trauma in his life. And might need to amend for something. Your glass is half full. Yeah, right? he's yeah. a good dude, guys. No. Uh, very beautiful. Uh, but yeah, he's playing a very long game, and uh, I think that again, that game comes from a very genuine place. So. Yeah. And and Josh, how's Shiro gonna deal with trusting? Well, Lotor mentioned something about calculated risks. And Shiro, early, early on in the show, talked about um, how in war you have to make hard choices. And so Shiro is no stranger to calculated risks. So I, I believe that Shiro is going to have to listen and see what's going on and, and get as much information as he can before he really uh, goes one way or the other. Yeah. And Jeremy, how, how is Lance going to handle this? Uh. <laughs> I don't want any more competition on this ship, especially when with that good looking of hair. Yeah, he doesn't uh, he doesn't like Lotor in any way, shape, or form at all. So it's like another alpha. alpha yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. He just yeah, he just sees him as evil, lying, no matter what, sketchy competition. All of the above, so he doesn't, doesn't like him. Doesn't Some would say he's season for what he is. Some would say not. Some might? Yes. Some <laughs> might not. So. I would, but anyway. yeah. Lance, that's not me. I don't know what happens. <laughs> um, Lauren, uh, Alora, the Alliance is really testing her leadership skills, and, and what's, what can we expect from that character this season? Well, I think Alora has probably been one of the most tested characters on our show, and she's really come a long way. And uh, and I think having Lotor now possibly in their ranks uh, is is a huge thing. It's probably the biggest thing that she's had to face. Uh -huh. I mean, with Keith being Alora, that was a much smaller thing because she knew she could at least trust Keith, but she has no idea what Lotor's up to. So it's it's definitely something that she's going to have to take some time to think about and uh, and just make the best decision she can make. Mm -hmm. I will say he's gone a long way to proving himself thus far. I mean, he's given them key locations, guys. Come on. And he's good that true. hair. <laughs> and that <laughs> hair. Yeah, that hair. <laughs> we, we see where you're going with this. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, Christine, what design elements can we expect to see in season five? Any big new things? Well, I'm very excited about uh, Zarkon's new suit, his armor. Uh -huh. um, I'm very excited to see that in action. Uh, so. That's good. And you actually, okay, I love this about you being from Seattle and coming here because you designed an exclusive poster for Emerald City Comic Con. I did, yes. I, I, had the, uh, I had the honor of doing that, yes. Okay, tell us a little bit about that poster and um, people are, some people are going to be able to get that poster. <laughs> You know, uh, a couple years ago, I came to Emerald City to meet Mike Mediola, who is one of my favorite artists of all time. And he had done this awesome poster specifically for Emerald City that had Hellboy standing in front of the Fremont Troll, uh, holding a cup of coffee. And I just remember, as a fan, I was like, that's so cool that an artist took the time and, and the effort to 
incorporate their their thing into the city that they're going to. Yeah. You know? So I was like, especially since I'm from here, you know, I wanted to show some love for the city. So, you know, there's some trees in there. <laughs> It is awesome, and I I, Thank you. Thank I you. love it. And you guys, I believe, can all uh, you can purchase them or downstairs. And, and I think everyone here gets one for free. I do. I love that. One thing about the franchise is there's so many things that are collectible. Like I know there's tons of comics. The season three of the Legendary Defender comics is launching in July. Yes. And there's Simon and Schulster's Ready to Read series, which is really crazy because if you collect all of the different series, you can make a Voltron poster out of that. Yeah. Which is so by jam. Form poster. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Lions Forge Comics just launched the trade paperback volume two pilgrimage. I mean, are you guys collecting a lot of this merch yourselves or or how do you even sort through all this stuff? We do have a bunch of stuff in our office. We're collectors, just insane collectors in general, um, but yeah, we sort of get boxes delivered to us and we're like, oh my gosh, look at this, oh my gosh. We'd love to see more, to be honest with you. We'd just love to inundate everybody with as much Voltron merch as possible, but what we have is really fantastic. You know what I'd love to see that we don't have yet, that we should have? Uh oh Funko Pops. <laughs>
connection that kind of started that, um, or if it was just Iverson egging him on, and will we ever see that in a flashback? We'd love to show you all the flashbacks. We'd love to do an entire spin-off show of flashbacks. <laughs> Specific incident. Yeah, I, uh, know I just specifically we. Yeah, I think it, eventually we might show some things that are I in think the past. It, I think yes. it comes from a place of uh, ultimately Lance got Keith's spot uh, as as a fighter pilot, and he's heard all of this amazing stuff about Lance being the greatest pilot, and, or being the greatest pilot. Lance, and Lance is the greatest pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you get that wrong. So I think he just feels that that competitive nature. So when his competitor is, is near him, he can't help but kind of. And the yeah. fact that his competitor had no idea who he was. <laughs> that drives me even that much more crazy. He didn't think of anything of him. He thought he was. He didn't know him at all. You know. And the only reason that he really got that spot is because he dropped out. So had that not happened, he wouldn't have even been there at all. So there's that little kind of still that little bit of like. Ugh, dang it, this guy. There you go. There's your answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy your cupcake. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi. Oh, I'm really nervous. Uh, hi. Um, Deep breaths. First of all, I love all of you. You all have inspired me so much with all of Thank my own so stuff. Much. Thank you. We love you. Um, yes. I wish I could take you all home and give you big hugs and give you spaghetti. I would love to eat that spaghetti. Um. Uh. Um, I would just like to ask, uh, what were your reactions on this? Not my Shiro. Hashtag not my Shiro. I think we love the fact that everybody's theorizing what's going on. So we embrace the theories. We embrace all the theories. Um, and it's exciting that you know, we've got an angle on Shiro that was not there at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we accept the hashtags. We appreciate We appreciate the hashtags. And we'll see where the hashtags lead. And if you pan out, y'all are going to be really embarrassed to make fun of That's time. right. <laughs> Thank you. But let me also just say that everybody is allowed to get a haircut from time to time. <laughs> Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. um, two things. One, Rude, you're ripping apart my emotions with that episode. <laughs> and two, do you think we will ever see the introduction of some romance in the Voltron? <laughs> Plants, maybe. <laughs> romance. What's going on with that? Well, I think when it comes to the romance thing, we, we want to just let that evolve naturally if it does evolve in the show. Uh, we didn't want to kind of start the show uh, with with any ideas of like, this is where this is going to go. We're going to make sure this, these people fall in love because ultimately what they're doing is a pretty big deal. And falling in love in the midst of that is probably pretty hard to do uh, when you've got so much weight on your shoulders of saving the world. So it's just something that we, I think, are willing to see if it happens in the show, but we're not definitely setting out like why this season there's going to be romance no matter what. It's just we didn't want any characters that were initially defined by the fact that it was eventually going to go to a romantic place. We wanted them to stand on their own before. Yeah. Everybody has cool arcs aside from any of that, which is really important. Instead of that just being their whole thing is that they have a relationship in the show. Right? Exactly. You know? But it is, you know, it's it's a cool place to explore. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's very table. possible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. A lot of good looking ladies in space, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hi, um, my name's Mary, and one thing that I was curious about is what are your favorite comedic moments from the show? Ooh, oh, that's a good question. I liked the slow down Colton Ecker like, <laughs> ride. <laughs> 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 that sequence is like disturbing, but hilarious. It's so great. Yeah. I, I thought you were going for the other Kaltenegger slowdown of the. Uh, oh, that's, well, another, yeah. that's another fantastic one, yeah. Yeah, uh, 
Um, yeah, I think I've got to go pretty much with that, but also with the, the prelude to that, which was Lance just failing at the video game. <laughs> it was also very fun. And uh, one of our fan favorite jokes is just the massive long pan of, of all the, the connections that they had to do to make that That's video right. work. Like the start of modem sounds and just... Those analog, like, very earthbound RGB cables were tough to make work in alien hardware, so... I liked, um... Varkon Space Cop. Yeah. I love him. I love how excited he gets and how he has a poster of Zarkon in his, in his little room. Love it. One of my one of my favorite ones is from uh, Karam when like I don't know which I remember what exactly which episode it is, but they're having trouble with somebody basically taking on the Red Lion, uh, and so Karam like puts on his whole suit. You know? and he goes up in there and he's like, I'm ready, Al Four. Alright, you're just gonna go for a quick left? <laughs> By the way, Jeremy does all of Karan's scratch when Reese is not available to do That's the best for him. That impression is spot on. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So, my name is Moya, and I'm from Seattle, and I have a question that the fandom has wanted answered for a long time. Uh -oh. Last names! Fair, fair. In the future, we've lost all last names. Everybody goes by first names. Like, no, I don't know. There's no real good answer to that other than... Except that certain ones already have last yeah, names. Yeah, some people have last names, other people don't. Uh, I don't know. What's the answer? The answer uh, is... I, I've always been partial to Keith, Keith Bobies. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a tough it's a tough nut to crack because ultimately you go one direction, you make some people unhappy. See who you want in these characters because they have first names and they can be whoever you want with their last names. Um, and that's, Lance that's actually Lance's doing. last name actually is Lance. His first name is Lancey, so it's Lancey Lance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That works. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. representation for people to see that in her. And ultimately, Pidge was always meant to represent people who didn't fit into a, a standard norm. And so, so that's a great thing, and I love that people see that in her. By the way, Pidge is just awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm Leandra. I'm Lauren, and we're from Portland, and Lauren has a question, uh, but first we wanted to say, Happy Birthday! Yes! yes. <laughs> also, would you like some balloons? And who doesn't like balloons? Yes. I'll take some balloons. You know what, after the panel, we'll grab the balloons. We'll grab them, yeah. we'll grab them. We'll grab them after the panel. Anyways, my question is for Jeremy Shada. In your opinion, is Lance a singer, and what's his favorite song? Lance is definitely a singer. Uh, and his favorite song is probably Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. I would assume. I would assume it's fun. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. And thanks for the balloons. We'll grab them. Enjoy your cupcakes. Hi. Hello, my name is Megan, I'm from Spokane, Washington. My question is for Lauren and Joaquin. Uh, how long was the process from when you first thought you wanted to make a reboot to when you got your finalized version? Was there like a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into getting everything done? Yes, yes tell there us was. about how this all came Absolutely. about. Yeah. And it's actually, it's still an ongoing process. We, uh, you know, it started with us hearing that DreamWorks had acquired the property and kind of theorizing like, you know what, we really love that show and we feel like we could bring it into today and, and still be loyal to or true to the original, but you know, just 
bring it into the new times. And so we just started thinking about it. We did a few interviews where we didn't get to just be like, hey, you want to do that? And they're like, here's your job. Right. Like, we, we did have to actually like meet up people and, and tell them our ideas. And we were extremely lucky that we got the job. And there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into it. And there's a lot of iteration that happens when you're developing like a whole universe. Um, just sort of briefly, the original pitch that we had, Earth was post-apocalyptically taken over by the Galra from the get-go. So it evolves very differently, uh, you know, stories and, and the development sort of takes you in different directions. Yeah, a lot goes into it. A and ton goes into it. You start, so you have an idea, it gets, you know, Joaquin has a saying, he likes to say, you, you sculpt, sculpt a little. little, we sculpt a little, and at the end we got a beautiful statue. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're hopefully in the midst of making a beautiful statue. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank statue. you. Hi. Hello, I'm Mandy. I'm from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I drove 400 miles to be here. Oh. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was born in Boise, Idaho. So. Oh, nice! Um, first, I would like to say, Jeremy, I love the new Make Out Monday album. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, it's my band, Make Out Monday. Go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Second of all, I had to write down my question because I, I was afraid I was going to forget it. Um, I know that Altaians don't have the same time measurements or ages uh, the same as humans do, but recently fans have claimed Valentine's Day as Alora's unofficial birthday, mostly because everyone loves her. Would you agree that, uh, to this, or would you think Alora's Earth birthday would be a different date? I think that's beautiful. And, uh, and I think any day you want to celebrate Alora is an awesome day to do it. So just go for it. But it's, it's a very nice gesture. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's actually brings about another question. How often do you guys take something from the fan base and, and actually incorporate it into the show? You know, it's tough. We'd love to say that that happens all the time, but we're so far ahead of when everybody gets to see these things that the stories are written and they're locked and they're they're basically finished. So when we start, we're always surprised by the feedback on things that we weren't expecting to be. You know, we had no idea Space Dad was coming for us. <laughs> going to happen. So, uh, you know, moving forward, I think we're able to kind of infuse yeah. that a little bit. But. but we definitely see, like, fan theories that we love, and we're like, oh, that's a really good idea. Right, right. I right. wish we would have thought of that, yeah. but we really didn't. But, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. we can't actually get it into the show. Half Baller Keith, you guys saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> uh, that was already in the works, so when we saw somebody post, like, his knife with the, the Gala symbol on it, we were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are pretty amazing at scrubbing frame by frame and extracting every little bit of possible story from it. It's, it's pretty amazing. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Aiden from Seattle, Olympia area. Um, so we know how Allura and Shiro reacted to Pete's scholar reveal, but what about the rest of the team? I think the rest of the team knew Pete well enough to know that it wasn't really a big issue. And they don't know the Galra very well, so they, they don't even really know like what that means. You're a Galra, does that mean you grow purple for at some point? Like, they have no idea. <laughs> so uh, to them, he was just still Keith. I think it was pretty easy for them to get past it. Uh, but for Laura having the history with the Galra that she has, it was and, a little too well, yeah. Like, yeah. With, with Shiro, you know, he had that but, history. But he loves, you know, Keith. Yeah, he has so the most sees, history with Keith. So he sees the, the good of it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Allison from Castle Rock, and I was wondering if we would ever see a return of the character Loverboy Lance. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's... I, yeah, I think, I think Lance embodies the character. Yeah, I think he is yeah. Loverboy Lance. I think that's exactly what he is. So, that was, oh my gosh, like, that's such a... I don't even know if I'd heard someone use that term even before we had it, like, on the show or not. But just in that in that episode too, where they're doing like all like the theatrical yeah. promotional of Voltron, and he like comes like careening down the wire work. That's such a funny moment. It just totally embodies like him, you know, just like how he sees himself, and just like, well, hello, yeah, you know, it's just it's it's it's, it's just it is him. It's his character, hundred percent. So, thank you for cosplaying as the best character. <laughs> I think so. If we don't call it out directly, we just know he embodies the lover boy persona at all times. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Always. Hi. Um, hi. I was wondering why Keith was booted from the garrison. Yes. Yes. 
You know why Iverson has a closed eye permanently? <laughs> exclusive piece of merchandise that is super rad. They're, you guys did like a pendant, right? Ooh, it's like a lion paw pendant. Are you guys wearing them? Okay. So, I didn't get one, so. You'll get one. Uh, okay. Well, there's only, I think there's only like 50 of these available, and I'm certainly gonna grab one. And super cool. You guys should They're too, awesome. because. And, and it doubles as a mustache comb. Yeah, you can comb your mustache if that happens to be your jam. So, that's, that's a good example, thank you. All right, hi, how are you? Good. Um, this question, uh, I'm Kenna Ellsberg. Um, this question is actually for Josh and Jeremy, because I know both of you have done voice acting in the past lot of things. I know Josh, you did some Disney, and you've been Finn in Adventure Time. Yes, I have! <laughs> <laughs> so what I was curious about is what initially inspired you both to uh, go into voice acting? What was kind of that moment that made you go, this is what I want to do with my life? Um, for me, I, I got my start doing just like on camera uh, acting, which I, which I still do. Um, and I started acting when I was like five or six, and I just always had a huge love and uh, interest in entertainment and movies and TV shows and just all of it. That's just I just loved it as a kid, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, and so it was a long process from like I started acting when I was probably five or six years old. Uh, I didn't start voice acting until I was uh, seven or eight, maybe. <laughs> uh, the agency I was at had a, a voiceover department and I kind of worked my way up with uh, going out and like little radio commercials and stuff like that and then just working my way up over time and over time. Um, but for me, it's literally been most most of my entire life. You know, I don't really remember a time before acting in some way, shape, or form. And so for me, it's just what I've always done, what I've always wanted to do, and what I always hope to continue to do. Um, so it's just pretty much what I love doing for me. Jeremy and I have a very similar story. I, uh, I was a child actor as well, and, uh, and I, I grew up in it. I have three sisters. All of them were in the business in some shape or, or form uh, for all of my life, so it's something I always remember doing as well. Um, and cartoons were something I was obsessed with. I mean, I would dress up as He-Man in like a, a He-Man costume that my grandma made and run through the, the, uh, the grocery store uh, screaming, I have the power. And, and, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I've always loved doing it. And I also started out with an on-camera career um, there's not a, there, well, at that time there, were, there weren't a lot of opportunities for young voice actors because they use adults to play kids. Um, but there were some things that, that did use kids, and so I, I got some parts in that. And then uh, once I, once I uh, was Hercules in, in the Disney Hercules, the young Hercules, uh, I got a voiceover agent, and the voiceover department pretty much uh, started sending me out on a bunch of other stuff, and that's when I learned about radio commercials and promo work and uh, video games were just starting to have voices at the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've always loved it. I've, I've, always, I've always loved uh, being not myself and, and, uh, and just donning, on, donning some other character for a while. It's, I, I love it. And getting to yell guttural battle screams and not be called a crazy person. I used to so, say that yeah, like Form Voltron. I mean, I used to say that when I was a little kid. It's, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I still haven't gotten to say Form Voltron yet, but maybe it'll happen. <laughs> I can say it right now. Lance, yeah. Form Voltron! <laughs> that might be the only time you ever hear that, so. Uh, <laughs> so You're day. not even in the black line, Lance. You just made everyone's day, so that's all good. Thank you so much. We have time for one more question. We're going to go over here. Hi. Hi, my name is Sean from Seattle. Uh, my question is actually for all of you. Is there any specific voice line, writing idea, art concept that didn't make it into the final product that you really wish did? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a tough my one. stick figure Shiro definitely did not make it. <laughs> I don't wish it wasn't that. <laughs> um, uh, there was originally going to be like a flashback of, of Paige kind of looking for, trying to find her father and brother, um, you know, scanning the skies with her little 
computer that she had that she was listening out in the space, and then ultimately making the choice to cut her hair, leave, uh, leaving a note for her mom. It ended up getting cut down quite a bit, so you still see her cut her hair, but there was more to it that I, I wish we could have kept in, but ultimately you get the idea, so it's all right. Um, we had a, this is not really a design, I, I just wish we were able to work this element into the story. Um, when we first started at DreamWorks, Voltron was sort of announced and our server was wide open to the entire studio and we noticed people kept coming onto our server to check out updated yeah. designs. <laughs> so I did this like stick figure thing of Voltron that was like in the, you know, character in the design folder. So when anybody looked, and then I made a totally secret file on the server. So when anybody looked in our in our files in the server, all they found was this stick figure kitty cat. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> somehow been able to work that stick figure in. <laughs> I have no idea. Any any moments or design elements that that didn't make it in that you Oh god. Well yeah I mean this was probably it's probably a good thing that this design didn't make it in. <laughs> um, but when early on when we were doing pre production and still doing conceptual designs for all the lions and stuff. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, uh, but, but there's this one design of the black lion that looked pretty much like a zebra. Like, it was main, because you know, my idea wow. was like, yeah, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna represent his, um, like the lion's mane, but it's more like a mohawk, because that's cool, you know? And, uh, that's awesome. We had a meeting where I was showing these guys, and I put it up on the screen, and they're like, it's a zebra. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> Thank you, great question. And you guys, did you enjoy this hour?